Hello and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Benjamin Reynolds coming to you from beautiful Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And today I want to talk about a topic that I've never preached on before, but I would choose this year, April of 2021, to make it the first time I talk about after Easter. And my message is going to be after Easter, more important than you think. And I want to talk about this topic because many times we get excited about getting ready for Easter Sunday. We get ready. We make a lot of preparations, especially when I was younger. People would buy brand new outfits. We spend a lot of money, cook a lot of food. We have service and we get ready for the service and the day. But we don't put a lot of thought into what happens after Easter. And when we look back at the ministry of Jesus Christ, the reason why he came to this world, he lived, he died, and he rose from the dead, it wasn't just about what he did on Easter, rising from the dead, and it wasn't about his death on Good Friday, but the most important part is the legacy that he left after the resurrection as a, to what we were supposed to do with his death. I would like to read from the book of Acts, beginning in chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. This former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself, alive after his passion by many unfallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he ye have heard of me this is an incredible passage of scripture talking about how after Jesus rose from the dead, he made a point to show that he was still alive. And he didn't do it one day. He didn't do it two days, three days, not even a week. The Bible says 40 days. For 40 days, Jesus showed himself. It says in, he spoke about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he also gave instruction that they were supposed to go to Jerusalem to get and do it with power from on high, which is the Holy Ghost. And this is talked about in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 48. And I want to say that what we do after each, after Easter church service is very important. It will most likely impact what you do for God, for the church, and your spiritual and personal evangelical ministry for the rest of the year. Easter church service should really be a springboard or a, a launching pad to encourage and inspire you to go forward and do more for Jesus. It like it did for the apostles and the disciples. The apostles and the disciples, they did more for, for the world, more for God after Jesus died than they did before Jesus died during the three and a half years of his ministry. Jesus, he used the time after his death those 40 days to do three things. One, he expanded on the ministry foundation that he established during his three and a half year earthly ministry. He, Jesus taught the apostles more about the kingdom of God. Secondly, it, the Bible said he showed infallible proof of his deity, his godliness, which confirmed everything that he taught in his ministry when he said that he was God, when he said that he was the son of God. And finally, Jesus reminded the apostles about the Holy Spirit. He talked to them about the Holy Spirit before he died. It wasn't just Acts 2.38 when we learn about the Holy Ghost or Acts chapter 1. But throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus talked to them about the Comforter, about the Holy Ghost, about being born again, born of the Spirit. And so what Jesus did after he rolled was he reminded them of the teaching that he had already given them. 
Jesus, he reviewed, he reiterated what he had previously taught the apostles, and then he gave them instructions about what they needed to do going forward. I want to tell you that Easter isn't just about revealing the past. It's about detailing how we're going to properly move forward and do the will of God in the kingdom of God. After we get inspired, or rather after uh, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, Peter instructed the church about how to rebuild, about how to reestablish the ministry going forward. It took Peter, a former failure, a man who cussed like a sailor, the man who sunk down and nearly drowned on the Sea of Galilee when he stepped out of the boat, this man who was a constant failure, who denied Jesus. Somehow, after the resurrection, he rediscovered his faith. He was able to reinvigorate and to inspire other people to establish the church and to reestablish Christianity. You see, Peter, Jesus told him, he said, look, you're going to fail. You're going to mess up. But when you get your faith back, praise God. When, when you get to a point where you believe in me again and you're able to do the work of God, go out and strengthen the brethren. And that's exactly what Peter did. Sometimes people think that they got to be perfect. They think that they've got to be the, the right kind of speaker, a certain height. They got to look a certain way. Let me tell you, Peter was one of the greatest failures. And through the power of God, he turned his life around into one of the greatest successes that the Bible has ever heard of. Amen. Too often, we are waiting, sitting around waiting for other people to tell us what to do, how to do it. But if Easter is going to mean anything in our lives, the story has got to be symbolic of that old person dying, being reborn, better, stronger, holier. The message has got to inspire us to do more like Peter did. Peter didn't just, in the pop, they didn't just sit back waiting on something to happen after the resurrection. When, Je when they heard that Jesus had rolled and he talked to them and told them what to do, let me tell you, they got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost was able from then on to help them do what they were unable to do. Immediately after the death of Jesus, they sat around, they were down, they were waiting, they thought it was all over. But let me tell you, Jesus came to them those 40 days after. After the death of Jesus, after the resurrection, changed them more than the beginning. You see, during the, the what Jesus had taught them during his earthly ministry, it was in their mind, it was in their heart, but it did not motivate them enough to go out and do the ministry and do the work like they should have been doing. It took Jesus rising from the dead and spending those critical 30 days with them to get them to stand up and say, hey, we got to take the bull by the horn. We got to go out and do the work that we had. Jesus, he walked on water. He did miracles. He fed the multitude. He preached. Jesus did everything. Jesus did everything for them, but he was gone. Now it was on their shoulder to do the thing that Jesus told them that they were going to do. Amen. I want to talk about unfinished business. Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 14 through 16, and then I'm going to read verses 22 and 26, verses 14, 14 through 16. These all continued with one accord in prayer, supplication with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number and names together were about 120, Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day he was taken up from us, must be ordained to be witness with us of his resurrection. What Peter was saying was that, there needed to be witnesses about what Jesus did, and somebody had to not just witness it, but they had to teach and talk about and spread the word about what needed to be done. 
and it's and continue and they appointed two Joseph called Barsabbas who was surnamed Justice and Matthias and they prayed and said thou Lord which knowest the heart of all men now this is verses 24 2 through 26 I'm reading and they prayed and said thou Lord which knowest the hearts of all men show us whether these two thou hast chosen that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. I'm talking about unfinished business here. They needed to choose a replacement apostle to continue the work of God. Now, there was nothing happening. There was no teaching. There was no preaching. There was no ministry going on. All they were doing was praying and waiting. And then what happened was Peter stood up and he said, we got some unfinished business we need to take care of before this thing go forward. They had to choose a new apostle. Now, why was this so important? Why did they need to replace Judas Iscariot? Why couldn't they go on with 11 apostles and do the work of God? Jesus had appeared to them 40 days. He talked to them. He gave them instruction. But it was going to Jerusalem, following the instructions of God. And it was there that God moved on Peter to say, we need to choose that 12th apostle. And let me tell you, God chose 12 apostles for a specific reason. He could have chosen 11. He could have not chosen Judas. He could, he could have let, or he could have chose Judas fail and let them stay at 11. But Peter, moved by the Holy Ghost, said, no, we've got to find a replacement. And I want to tell you something, brethren. Then, like now, everybody had a preordained role to play in the church, to play in the ministry. And what you got to do in the, your church is you got to find out what your role is. You got to find out what your, what your role to do in the work of God is. You see, the church didn't go anywhere. We know on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 got baptized. We know that the word spread all around the world and there's billions of followers today. But there wouldn't the Christianity would have died in that upper room if they had not chose a 12th apostle because God had a role to play for 12 not 11 not 13 and many churches are, are unable to establish themselves to do the work of God to do evangelism to grow properly because people don't understand their role people can go to church they can we can have chicken dinner we do garage sale we do fundraiser but we can't do what God intended us to do we we can't see great growth. We can't do great miracle because there's unfinished business that needs to happen. And now, like then, we need the people that need to be in the work of God need to pick up Quit feeling sorry for themselves. Quit feeling sorry about this situation. Quit feeling bad because they don't they don't think they have the proper so, uh, support or people around them like they used to. And do what Peter did was find a place to pray. Forget about your past. Start looking forward. Pray for the power of the Holy Ghost and just go ahead and let God use you. Amen. Now Jesus told them his instructions would go to Jerusalem. What did he say? Acts chapter 1 verse 4 was that they should not depart for, from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. It was important for them to continue in the work of God that they get the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. John chapter 14 verse 16 said, actually, you know, before I read that, let's talk about the promise of the Father. Luke chapter 24, verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed or endued with power from on high. Jesus was talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. They were given instructions to stay in Jerusalem until they were filled by the Spirit. John chapter 14 verses 16 through 17 and I will pray the father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever 
Verse 26 says, even the spirit of truth, I'm sorry, verse uh, uh, 15, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, this is why we ask for the Holy Ghost and pray in Jesus' name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Now, why did they need the Holy Spirit to move forward in addition to, to fill in the position of the lost apostle? Well, they needed to be taught of the Spirit, even though Jesus taught them, it was three and a half years. They needed more teaching from the Spirit of God. And they also needed for Jesus to bring to remembrance the things that he already had taught them and showed them. And things that he was going to show them and that they might forget. The Spirit brings that to remembrance. And we need the Spirit of God in our personal lives. We need the Spirit of God in our ministry because the Holy Ghost is going to teach it's going to have us remember things that we've forgotten and things that we need to know. Jesus explained the necessity of the Holy Spirit during his earthly ministry before he died. And he explained it again after the resurrection when he was saying, you need to be endued with power from on high. They could not do the work of God without the power of God indwelling in them. This is why it's so important that when we're born again, we're, that we've got to get born of the water to wash our sins away. Then we've got to get born of the Spirit to, to start over as a holier spiritual person. But we've also got to get the power of God moving and flowing in our lives. And see, like, like most people, the apostles, the disciples, they did not take serious enough the things that Jesus was teaching them before he died. They just they took it for granted. They thought he would always be around. But later, they prayed by faith to receive the Spirit, just going on the words that Jesus said when he said, don't uh, depart from Jerusalem. And by faith, they they stayed in Jerusalem. By faith, they prayed and sought the Holy Spirit. And by faith, they were born again as the Spirit of God fell on them like cloven tongues. This is why we have to review and revisit the old teachings and find out and obtain what we lost, what we missed. Not just the Bible and the Word of God, but if you're going to be a strong saint, if you're going to be somebody that's going to be a soul winner, somebody that's going to do the work of God. You got to go through the tape library of your church. You got to dig up the old videos. You got to listen to and find the things that the ministry and the pastor taught you and tried to feed you because many of the things that we, the preaching and the sermons we hear, if it, if we don't feel that it's relevant for that week or that month, then we forget about it. We, we chuck it aside, but a lot, but many times what God is, is trying to, is teaching us and the word that we're being fed, it might not be for that day. It might not be for that week. may not even be for that month. But six months. But sometimes six months. A year. Three years. Five years. Six years. Later on down the road, the same word that inspired, that God inspired, Holy Ghost breathed word of God, will come back to feed you and give you the thing that you would need in that moment. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit to cause you to remember those things, you will miss what God is trying to give you. We understand what was taught in a better way, A, after we hear it more than once, B, after we receive the Holy Spirit, and C, after we get renewed by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit plays a critical part in our understanding and us being taught by the Holy Spirit. We're not just taught on Sunday. We're not just taught in the midweek Bible study, but we're taught when we sit down and we pray and, we'll, and the Holy Spirit brings up and causes us to remember critical things. We're taught by the Spirit when we read our, our, the Bible. 
and the Holy Spirit falls on us uh, to open up our understanding. Praise God. We also need the Holy Ghost to give us comfort, especially in times like right now uh, uh, of this COVID pandemic. Let me tell you, as time goes on and it's taking longer to solve it, than people than the government originally thought people are losing their minds uh, they have a term called covid divorce uh, or covid breakup because people spending more time than they imagined or thought they would couples can't take it and people are losing their mind because they can't go to church they can't go to where they can't do the things that they used to do let me tell you the comforter hallelujah will will bring will, will put you in a place where you're relaxed uh, i'm not talking about Xanax. I'm talking about the comfort that comes from God. What the Bible calls that blessed assurance that's been around for hundreds, for thousands of years, hallelujah, before they had Xanax, hallelujah, before they had Zoloft, before they had uppers and downers and relaxants. God was comforting people and letting them know that it's going to be all right, hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14, I pray the Father, and He will give you another comfort. Ooh, you've got the words of Christ, but Jesus will send somebody else to comfort you, somebody else, hallelujah, to relax you, somebody else to let you know you're going to come out of this pandemic all right, and not just all right, but the comforter, hallelujah, will let you know you're going to be better, hallelujah, coming out than when you went in, hallelujah. We need comfort in this hour. Past Easter, hallelujah. I'm talking about after Easter. Hallelujah. This is more than what we think. You see, it's on us to even when Easter is over to not just get down and go back into our shell, but look back at what God has been trying to teach us. Look back at what the minister preached to you, not just last week or last month, but dig up the old messages and see what God God is trying to do in your life, praise God, because I can guarantee God is trying to comfort us. And he's trying to teach us to remember all things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. When you get filled by the Spirit and moved by the Spirit, amen, you're going to be able to look at the Word of God in a different way, in a different perspective. You're going to take it a lot more serious because the disciples, when they heard the word of God, many times when Jesus would teach, he had to wake them up on the, and John, and, and I'm sorry, in Matthew 17, Jesus took uh, uh, James and John up to the mountain and they, they fell asleep. Peter, G, I'm sorry, not uh, the mountain, but in Gethsemane before he died, they fell asleep. Jesus had to wake them up. And because they did not take seriously the life and the ministry of Jesus. But when he was gone, they took it a lot more serious because the Holy Ghost was able to show them things that they had not saw before. They were more mature and they were in a better place. Praise God. Take this time to go deeper in the spirit, to get more mature. Because you're not always going to have pastor. You're not always going to have your first lady. You're not always going to have those mature Christians to do everything for you. Now's the time to be like Peter and stand up. Some people have been misfits where they haven't taken the word of God seriously. Haven't lived for God like they should. Many have even denied Christ. But let me tell you, Peter is a tremendous example of how with God, with the Spirit, and with maturity, you can turn your life around and go from a zero to a hero. You can go from somebody who doesn't do a whole lot to being a foundation of the church and a foundation of the ministry. One man, Peter, turned the whole Christian church around. In fact, the Catholic Church calls the role of the Pope the seat of Peter, and they model they're, they modeled their ministry and the role of the Pope after Peter, who was the head of the church. And let me tell you, Peter became a great person. Not because of what he did on Good Friday, not because of what he did on Sunday Resurrection, but Peter became great because of what he did after 
the resurrection. Amen. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Please take time to like the video. Please take time to subscribe. Help build the channel up. Bring some attention to it so other people can be ministered to and blessed by this ministry. May the Lord bless you.